So my name is Dmitry Kudryavtsov and my colleague's name is Natalia Chichkova. We represent the uh, company Digital City Planner and we will make a presentation about our smart review within ORKG. So uh, a couple of words about our company. So Digital City Planner is a startup company and our current focus is uh, within two areas and to, is associated to two products. Uh, the first one is a solution for city transformation with pre-installed knowledge base. And uh, the second one is a solution for helping team leaders in digitalization planning area to improve their business capabilities based on team's competencies. Uh, so before launching the startup, we had a lot of experience in consulting, research and education, and mostly in the area of enterprise architecture management, knowledge management and knowledge engineering. And uh, we worked with different industrial companies and also uh, uh, work uh, at universities. Uh, so about our contribution to the ORKG. So we curate the Smart City Planning Observatory within the Open Research Knowledge Graph. We've already uh, described more than and 200 uh, papers and made more than 20 comparisons and they mostly cover such uh, issues as uh, smart city ontologies and how to describe uh, cities uh, performance management and metrics uh, for cities uh, reusable building blocks for uh, smart cities so reference architectures uh, uh, reusable architectures and so on so here you see some examples of uh, our comparisons and uh, smart reviews so as you see they are mostly about ontologies uh, smart city indicators and stuff like that so um, before we will start with our um, smart review, I'd like to provide a brief introduction into the topic. Uh, and so smart city is a municipality that uses information and communication technologies to increase operational efficiency, share information with the public and improve both the quality of government services and citizen welfare. Uh, so what are the smart city implementation challenges? Uh, data integration is rather problematic, non-sufficient collaboration between departments, and also many promising technologies such as AI, digital twin, require a solid conceptual skeleton in order to be transparent and manageable. And uh, as it seems for us, mm, uh, smart city ontologies can be considered as a solution for uh, these challenges. So ontologies defines basic terms and relations uh, comprising the vocabulary of a topic area. Uh, then uh, here you may see an example of smart city ontology. Mm, so it was suggested by uh, Greek uh, specialists. And um, as you see, there are classes, relationships between them and so on. Uh, but there, there is also some problems with ontologies in smart city domain. Uh, since project specific ontologies and similar information or knowledge models should not be created from scratch and they should be assembled from existing uh, building blocks or from existing ontologies. So ontology reused is hi highly um, popular but it is hard to select suitable ontology or ontologies and its elements for reuse within the specific project. And it seems for us that uh, a smart review in ORKG may help uh, solving this uh, problem. Uh, so our smart city ontologies review 
a smart review integrates uh, three comparisons. The first one is about ontologies uh, uh, for smart city and covers uh, levels and key classes of uh, these ontologies. The second one is about domain coverage of ontologies and the third one about uh, reuse or ontology reuse within existing smart, uh, smart city ontologies. And as you can see from this paper, uh, we created uh, the smart review based on uh, uh, 18 papers and uh, created about 40 contributions in order to create these comparisons. And now my colleague Natalia will uh, provide uh, more details about smart review within uh, the ORKG. Hello everyone. Um, I will just demonstrate my monitor um, very quick. So, um, one more minute. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see the my screen? Everything is fine. I see. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> so, uh, as my colleague said, uh, here is our smart review. It's about uh, smart uh, city ontologies. We have free comparison related to this topic. And first of all, I want to mention that uh, one tool which I used all the time while I was creating comparisons was uh, templates. Like as soon as I discovered templates, I used it all the time. It's like I found it the most useful tools for me uh, to work with ORKG. So <clears throat> let's come back to um, to our smart review. So here we have a free comparison. The first one, uh, what we try to do, we try to have few smart city ontologies and compare their classes and try to classify their classes into some kind of city um, administrative or physical levels. And uh, yeah, here, such as like, Activity level, administration level, agent level, and so on. And uh, we have we try to find similarities and differences, like in different city ontologies, um, like what kind of classes they create, uh, they were created. And as you can see, some of the ontologies didn't have any classes regards to activity level. Some of them has one, and so on. So yeah, the, they're pretty different. Uh, even though we have a property which called re reuse model, where you can see the ontologies which were used as uh, which were used in creation of smart city ontologies and they're pretty different as well um, so yeah here and why we even create the smart review one more remark uh, the main question for us was to understand smart city even has their st standards and even few standards uh, is it even possible to create like a general or like common ontology for smart city and that every city can use it. So, and why it's already been created so many smart city ontologies. So here, yeah, so we have, we found some similarities, we have found some differences, and here the next table shows you um, properties that and their description or their um, definitions um, here. So the last two comparisons, was uh, based on the same paper, Espinosa Areas uh, 2019. And uh, first of all, she took a few ontologies. Some of them is similar as we uh, consider in the first comparison, some of them different. So um, first of all, we checked uh, ontology domains. Are uh, they, again, do they have any similarities or they don't? So yeah, so some of them obviously has and some not. And the second one was about, um, again, uh, ontology which were reused in a smart city ontology. So some of them were, were reused as a reference, some of them were reused as imported, some of them was reused as, uh, as reference as metadata. And again, here you can find really interesting different results. Uh, so as a conclusion, uh, we can say that uh, smart a review this smart review about ontology, smart city ontologies can help to select a relevant smart city ontology for a specific project and needs. And the answer to our question was it's actually impossible to create it like a general or like common smart city ontology for 
any city, just in the case that um, ontology is used for different purposes, for different needs. So it's just uh, your choice, which one you want to use, which one is more relevant to your research or um, to your topic. So this is all for from me. If Dmitry want to add something. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah, We're ready you. to answer your questions. Thank you for this um, presentation of a smart review. That's something new here. Uh, so that's a nice change. Any questions from the audience? They're all shy. So I, I have some questions. So for, first of all, you already mentioned uh, that you like the templates. Um, could you explain your general workflow for adding content to the ORKG? I guess you uh, start reading the papers, of course, but then any tools in addition to the templates that you generally used? Yeah, I use templates all the time. It's helped me a lot just like uh, to create, you know, like a skeleton of my comparison and after just to enter information it was extremely useful. And uh, however, I tried to use another tool uh, which called um, like um, survey, hold on, I even open it, survey tab table import. And it's not actually works uh, because I tried why well, I tried to use it because I have a pretty big uh, table and I tried to maybe automatically download it or something. And it was it's interesting. I don't remember did I describe you this issue, uh, but uh, the part of the table was on one page and another part was on the second page. And uh, this tool could not read it. Uh, it could read just first part and could not read the second part. So I stopped using it just in a, because it was really inconvenient for me. And of course, like I, I create a template, I downloaded the paper and after choose a, um, a field and uh, through the template, uh, yeah, I choose a template and it was so easy to add information. Uh, however, uh, yeah, I have seen now that uh, you already create like a template button where you hide all the templates, which is will be even more useful. I think like I will create more com uh, more uh, comparison in the future and it will help even more. So yeah, for me, it was enough. Like I didn't use a CV, a CV like exporter or something importer. So for me, templates was enough, like more, mm -hmm. than, more than enough. Uh, uh, I may add that uh, I actively used uh, work with uh, resources and classes. So when, for example, we have uh, different uh, indicators uh, for smart cities or different classes in our ontology. Uh, we created uh, a class in, uh, our, in the editor and then we added instances uh, for this class uh, and uh, in order to reuse them in uh, uh, comparisons uh, in the cells uh, within the comparisons. So it was another thing that we used actively and maybe as a future steps I hope it will be also possible to make a hierarchy of classes and actually create ontologies within uh, knowledge graph. Yeah, yeah, we are working on that. Um, so um, if you uh, if you would have to make a, a selling point, a pitch for the OIKG, what would that be? Mm. Why do you want to use the ORKG? I mean, outside of the curation grant. Uh, we think that uh, it can be considered as a knowledge base uh, for reusable content. And so if some organization requires uh, reusable uh, knowledge resources in any domain, for example, if there is an organization which works a lot with uh, information models and they need some uh, already um, built uh, uh, set of uh, ontologies, for example, they may uh, use uh, knowledge graph as a 
a source uh, for their knowledge base or maybe they may have an, a kind of uh, their own observatory, for example, organizational observatory within your ORKG in order to curate their uh, company knowledge within this. So it can be a kind of uh, knowledge base uh, solution or knowledge management system uh, or a part of it for companies. And what was the most annoying thing when working with the OIKG? Oh, just a little uh, small issues which I usually describe in Skype, <laughs> like I have some of them like technology. I understand that like you're still working with that and like I, I, I like I, I, I can handle maybe the, uh, for me, maybe and I will I will show I have one more issue with smart review today. And uh, for me, it's just maybe not as I don't know how to solve it, but sometimes it's not really helpful like to see the whole comparison like i know it's difficult to show like i don't know all 30 papers which i add but sometimes when i see just three of them it's not very useful as well on my screen i don't know how to make it like better or something so something like that just like a view like it's better to have like a full picture and uh, but honestly i don't know how to solve this maybe it's the best one <laughs> like how you solve it now yeah Always good to have uh, at least descriptions of the things that annoy, and then we can think about solutions yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Any uh, questions from the audience? That's not the case, then thank you too.